So this is me, the art of being yourself in a world of seven billion. Growing up in the 21st century, I am constantly bombarded by messages and encouragements telling me to be myself. And as one of the approximately seven million teenagers in Britain currently, it is sometimes difficult to have my own unique identity. My friend recently cut her hair and I really like the style, but does that make me too much of a copycat if I get the same cut? A group in one of my classes uses the word like, like literally all the time. What does it mean for me if I actually end up, end up like mimicking their speech patterns? Okay, I think it's working now. So I think one that really stands out is this. You were born an original, don't die a copy. Well, the first point of this talk is that originality is overrated. I believe that we put far too much emphasis on originality and we forget that firstly, copying has its merits. Secondly, creativity is not the same as originality. And thirdly, being yourself doesn't require you to be a completely distinct, unique and never before seen personality. So in fact, copying and imitation of others is integral to our capacity for learning. As human beings, the way we learn is frequently through mimicking others. From around six months onwards, babies can learn to clap their hands by copying adults around them. And from two months onwards, they can mimic your facial expressions, for instance, tongue protrusions. This basic copying allows them to learn which expressions correspond to which emotions, which can they, they can then consequently make on their own in relevant situations. It is the same for young artists. First you sketch out the framework of how to draw and learn by copying, and then you progress and learn to mix up all these influences into something that is uniquely yours. Moreover, original, originality is actually a relatively modern notion, only emerging in the 18th century. Before then, marks of intelligence had been perceived as being able to hark back to previous works. So, for example, William Shakespeare, who is often lauded as the greatest English playwright, was himself a master copycat of his 37 plays. The Tempest remains the only plot that hasn't yet been traced back to an earlier source. So, to paraphrase Isaac Newton, we are all standing on the shoulders, or the tongue protrusions, or the doodles of those who have come before us. This brings us to the main point. There's a very clear distinction between originality and authenticity that I think we sometimes miss. Originality, we know, is not being derived from anything else, something being the first of its kind, whereas authenticity is defined as being genuine and sincere, but it might involve some degree of imitation which is perfectly natural and often very beneficial. So being yourself and staying true to who you are is important, but being completely natural, being completely unique and the first of your kind is not necessary. Gaining inspirations from other ideas is something to be decided. Authenticity trumps originality. After I had decided on this topic for my talk, I did what anyone would do and I Googled some questions around this for my research. So I looked up, is originality dead? And wonderfully, ironically, I was met with page upon page of the exact same idea I'd had. I even looked on page 10 of the Google search and the results were still coming in. So clearly my idea was not the first of its kind. What it was, however, was authentic. It was a topic I was interested in and my intentions from the beginning were to educate and to learn myself, not to plagiarize. Mark Twain once said, there is no such thing as a new idea, it is impossible. We simply take a lot of old ideas and put them into a sort of mental kaleidoscope. We give them a new turn and they make new combinations. We keep on turning and making new combinations indefinitely. They are the same old pieces of coloured glass that have been in use throughout all the ages. So here we are again, back where we started, being told to be yourself. But who really are you? So, coming up soon, hopefully, is a mind map of all of the factors that I believe constitute a person. If you consider them, other than upbringing and genetics really, all of them can change. So your personality clearly isn't something that is set in stone. I believe it's an ever-shifting conglomeration of thoughts, feelings and behaviours. 
Of course, you might be more introverted than extroverted, but at different points of your life, you're likely to feel varying degrees of sociability. And even just imagining greater confidence or pretending to be comfortable in situations when you're not can actually alter this. So one of my New Year's resolutions was to be more open-minded. I accept who I am, I accept that I'm flawed and have many faults, but I refuse to accept that these faults should define me forever, and that they are such an integral part of who I am, they are unalterable, and that to wish to change them borders on her say and a failure to love myself. I believe humans are inherently imperfect, but that we can only try every day to be better versions of ourselves. I am flawed, but I am not final. And what I mean by that is be yourself, love and accept yourself, whoever that is, but always be open to change and improvement. So the final points to remember. Originality is overrated and authenticity is much more valuable. Imitation and inspiration are great, but not plagiarism. Copy to learn and be inspired. Don't be tempted to pass up others' work as your own. And self-acceptance and self-improvement. Love yourself, even in the process of improving, learning and evolving. Thank you.